Yeah, just a quick video everyone. If you've got a Beko dishwasher and it's throwing out your RCD trip in your uh, just consumer unit, um, you'll find that um, it's a difficult thing to track down unless you've seen it before because uh, it's not quite as straightforward as a normal leap to ground. What it is, the live connection on the plug is somehow connected to the chassis of the machine, i.e. the ground connection, and uh, you end up with the trip tripping out intermittently um, and not staying in and the, the degree to which it trips depends on you know sometimes it'll trip straight away other times it'll trip in in a few minutes this thing now when you're doing the uh, debugging you can unplug the pump and you still get some problems and we unplugged everything all the solenoids the controller we even checked the wiring loom that was going up from underneath the dishwasher around the front of the uh, front door the actual uh, access door um, to see if the wiring had shorted and it wasn't straightforward and it was a very intermittent fault and in the end I tracked it down to the, the this, this pump motor and the interesting thing about this is that um, when you look at the actual unit itself it has only two connections it's got live and neutral in there live and neutral and then the control wires that go off to the control to control the speed you can see inside there is some electronics okay now <laughs> there's no ground connection on this so you think well how can this be leaking to ground it's got rubber pipes on and initially I discounted it could be this because you know it's all well um, it's got no ground connection on it um, how could it be leaking to ground well, I'll show you how it was leaking to ground, and I discovered this. So, and I'll just take it apart in a moment. You can see, but what I've got here is a mega. You can see it there. Let's just turn that off. You can see our mega, and um, you've seen one of these before. You've got uh, 100 volts insulation test, 250 volt insulation test, and the 500 volt DC insulation test. And I just set it to 250. And when I clipped one connection on the live wire on the plug, the live connection on the mains plug, and one on the chassis, I was getting some leakage to ground, which was in turn throwing out the trip. And I looked at this and thought, wow, there's no ground connection on the motor, there's just power and neutral. So how can it be leaking to ground? Well, I'm going to show you now how it can be leaking to ground because, first of all, the first thing I noticed was that uh, if I clip onto this rubber pipe, one clip on the rubber pipe and another clip on the rubber pipe and press the test button you can see it's actually conductive rubber pipe they've used and this pipe goes down onto the heating element there's a tubular heating element which heats the hot water and the pump pumps the water through and the water heats up and the leakage that was tripping the trip out was, was in the rubber pipe you can see the rubber pipe is actually conductive I'm just cl clipped onto the actual rubber and, and it's conductive so there's somewhere in here, there must have been a short between the electrical power circuit and the inside of the pump and the water in the pump, which was then coming up the pipe, causing the trip to trip. And um, in actual fact, if I just quickly take this apart, I mention this because it wasn't straightforward. I think I'm a fairly experienced engineer, although I've never worked on this machine before. And this pump comes apart. You can turn that anti-clockwise it's held on with some or three clockwise and it comes off then you can pull it off and you can see the inside is looking a bit rusty can you see that a bit sort of orange and then I grab this and you can see that there's a lot of play in this thing the bearings have gone and if we just quickly hook this boss out that supports this rotor you can pull the rotor out okay and in there is a bearing it's a wet bearing, water bearing, steel shaft water bearing you can see immediately that you've got a lot of play in that thing there a lot of play it's not playing nicely it's all loose it's like a, as they say <laughs> uh, loose oh, that's what I was going to say and you can see that it's gone and because that bearing has failed, this is sealed, so there's no actual seal. There's a rubber um, ring in there, which is a rubber mount to ru mount this bearing, which presumably is some kind of vibration, anti-vibration 
uh, arrangement and both bearings are fully knackered and what's happened is this rotor has been rubbing on the housing okay and where the motor rotor is rubbed on the housing you can see it's rubbed through the housing the water has got into the motor uh, winding itself so the motor winding is wet and it's wet from there and it's coming through this wall conducting via the water in the in the machine um, through the water onto the rubber pipe the rubber pipe is conductive and the rubber pipe is connected to ground on the uh, heating element the actual outer casing of the heating element so we messed around for a while trying to work out what it was but if you suspect that then uh, just take this pump apart and inspect this and you might find that actually the cause of the problem on your Beko dishwasher if it throws out the trip then the motor is worn out and you need to get yourself a new motor so I just thought I'd mention that because um, it caught us out and it took us a little while there's a couple of screws on here and you can pull this cover off as well and I'll just show you the electronics there's the electronic control board no ground connection on it at all just power on ground a uh, power and neutral neutral and live and then the control wires which are thin wires on this connector which go off to the actual controller to send signals down to this uh, controller to drive the motor it's quite a nice little board actually it just pushes on to three little pegs there and you can see there's the winding and it's got a permanent magnet magnet rotor here which is uh, worn through the housing so don't discount the motor and it was very highly intermittent by the time we actually got around to testing it the fault wasn't there and I was seeing an intermittent connection I couldn't work out what was going on and it was actually me touching the rubber pipe so I was just holding the clips on my hand would touch the rubber pipe I couldn't feel any uh, electricity going through me but it was actually me touching the rubber pipe which was causing the leakage to ground which was in turn throwing out the trip on the RCD on our consumer unit so that's it really a really quick one so if you've got a Beko machine that uses this pump then uh, strip the pump down and have a look if it's chucking the RCD out because if you start metering it it's not easy to find but that's what the cause was so we ordered a new pump we'll put that back in I'm confident that that will fix it it's very easy to get apart just a load of screws come out and the, the pump is easily you know you pull these clips back and uh, along the pipe these clips back along the pipe and it comes out very easily okay so um, that's it check your pump I think they call it a circulation motor in, in a lot of sites and I'll put up a, a part number of the unit in the description so you can have a look to see if it's the one that's used in your machine but such a shame such a piddly crap little bearing has caused the uh, scrapping of a whole pump there you have it so anyway hit the titty button down there for a subscription if you're not subscribed if you are subscribed thank you very much and leave me a like if I helped you diagnose what was wrong with your uh, Beko machine and what was causing it to throw out the trip so there you have it do with it what you will